Uh, with us in the studio, uh, we've got Senator Josh Harkins, the chairman of the Senate Finance Committee. Josh, how are you doing? I'm well, Lucian. Thank you for having me. How are you doing? Doing well. Doing well. I, I know this has been touch and go for a while. I know it's been a busy uh, busy couple weeks for y'all. It, it's been uh, a lot of long hours here, and that's usually the way it is at the end of the session, uh, trying to cram a lot of... Uh, a lot of stuff at the at the end of the session and you know we the budget we typically try to wait as long as you can uh to get march revenue numbers in to to really have a good picture of where we're going to be and so uh it's nothing unusual but it's just uh there's a lot to, a lot to cram in here at the last uh, week or so well I, I know y'all don't uh y'all don't complain about this but i will say as somebody who who does follow very closely what y'all do I, i'm aware and i hope people who listen to the show realize that it is a sacrifice being in the legislature, especially if you're in a senior role. I mean, that it's it's a lot of late nights where you're not with your kids, you're not with your family, you're you're up there uh, trying to trying to get things as, done as best as you can. And I, I know that that wears on folks after a while. It, it does, it, but you know, we're a citizen legislature. Most everybody is, if they're not retired, they uh, they have day jobs and they have jobs to go back home to. So I, th- I think uh, by this time of the session, everybody's ready to go back to work and uh, <laughs> get back to a normal routine. Well, we, uh, I think the, the biggest, I know finance has been very busy uh, yeah. this, this year, uh, but I think the biggest news is probably that the, the tax cut got worked out. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I think when we step back away from this session and do a postmortem here in a couple, you know, a month or two, we're going to look back on this session and realize the significance of what we've accomplished this year. I mean, th- you think about it, not only the, the tax cut that we'll talk about, but uh, the largest uh, teacher pay raise in state history. Um, you've got $1.8 billion of ARPA uh, funds that are going to go to 82 counties and hundreds of cities and towns across the state to help uh, with uh, infrastructure needs, uh, road and bridge. Uh, there's there's a lot of investment that's being made in the state, in our infrastructure, in our uh, workforce training, in our universities and uh, community colleges. So um, it, it's exciting, and I think what it sometimes gets lost in, in all the – the things that are being hyped up at the moment, but there's a lot of good legislation that's being passed and considered that uh, will hopefully have a, a continuing positive impact. And, and it's something we've said from the beginning, like this is an opportunity to do something for generation, generational change, for, for something for the long term. And I, I think we're we're getting close to seeing that to fruition. It's going to be exciting uh, time to kind of come look back after we get out of here and let the dust settle and see all the good things that we've uh, accomplished. Well, you want to walk us through a little bit what that final tax cut looks like? It's uh, sure more more complicated than uh, than well. Than co- it, it's gone through uh, a lot of iterations. There's been several different proposals, and there's a lot of different levers you can pull when it comes to uh, income tax. Uh, there's personal, there's corporate, there's grocery tax, there's uh, you know gas tax that was considerate uh, that was considered. Um, but what we what we ended on was, and this was after a joint legislative budget hearing where our state economists got up and spoke and talked about not only uh, the Mississippi economy, but the, the, the macro economy of the country and, and what kind of the trends are indicating to economists. And, and that's what we really have to go off of. We have to rely on our state economists and our legislative budget office to really guide uh, and, and give us some, some bumpers to kind of stay between in order to do whatever we all all the priorities we need to do and, and to kind of look at what the revenue picture looks like and what the forecast on jobs and, and kind of what the economy is looking like so what we settled on and what we agreed to and, and ultimately have passed and sent to the governor is a four-year 525 million dollar tax cut and right now uh, anybody that pays taxes on income the first five thousand dollars was at three percent and we wiped that out with the 2016 tax cut so above your uh, exemptions and deductions, your first five thousand dollars is not taxed now. The next five thousand, between five and ten thousand dollars, is taxed at four percent. We've eliminated that this next year. One year we're going to do away with the four percent bracket. That's two hundred dollars to everybody. Okay. Um, in the second year, we take our top marginal rate, which is five percent on personal income, and we lower it to four point seven in the second year. In the third year, we lower it to four point four percent, and in the fourth year, we lower it to four percent of flat tax. That'll put us like five or six in the country in the lowest uh, marginal tax rate uh, for states. And I think it's a it's a measured stepped approach that kind of lets us take a bite of the apple, digest it. We'll come back in a couple of years and see what the economy looks like, see where we are fiscally in our state, see how things are going and, and what priorities or things that we have to do out there that 
um, that we'll have a better picture of in, in three, four years. And I think that's a question a lot of people have. I mean, there are a lot of us, myself included, who'd love to see Mississippi eventually completely eliminate uh, the income tax. Mm-hmm. So two questions for you. I mean, where are you on total elimination of the of the income tax? And, and does, does this plan necessarily prevent us from eliminating the income tax in the future? Absolutely not. This is, I mean, if, if you're for eliminating the income tax, this is the first step. I mean, we were reducing our, our income tax rate to 4%, getting rid of the 4% rate uh, bracket, which now a married couple filing jointly won't pay income tax above your exemption deductions up to $26,600. They won't pay any income tax in the state of Mississippi. So it's the first start. I mean, it's it's one third of our revenue that our our um, state runs off of. So it's not like you can just eliminate it in one year and be done with it. It has to be a measured approach. And I think that's one thing that we've we've always stated is that like, look, let's take a bite of the apple. We'll come back and assess and look and see what uh, how we want to proceed. And so um, I think it's a it, it's a noble goal that gives the the working Mississippian more their money back. Um, but I, I've talked to a lot of Mississippians, and, and they want their taxes lower, but they also want to make sure that we're taking care of the priorities that – I mean, everybody has their own opinion about what the priority is. Uh, right. depends on what you're passionate about. But I think, you know, education, you look at the strides we've made in education. We just passed the largest teacher pay raise, $250 million. Um, you look at uh, the needs we have in corrections, mental health, child protective services, where we are under two court orders and skating on the third one. We've made significant investments in those areas. Uh, and it, quite frankly, it, it, it's going to take money to get us out of those uh, predicaments that we're in. Um, you know, our workforce training, our workforce participation rate in this state is at a, is one of the lowest in the countries. We have to get that up. Getting our workforce participation up and having jobs that people are trained and, and educated and ready to go into will help our situation. So, you know, more people working means more people are making money, more people are paying taxes, the revenues will be going up. Um, and that will give us the room to not only fund the priorities we need, but also to give some of that back to the taxpayer that gets up in the morning, goes to work, and pays it. it you know, I know the answer to this question because I, I, I know you. I know, uh, as I think a lot of our listeners do know, that you are a, a true conservative. But I, I think the the Senate's, the, the Senate's reticence to go along with a, a total elimination of the income tax, I think, sometimes got framed up as you or the Senate – not wanting to see a tax cut uh, at all. I mean, no, yeah, that's not the case. I mean, we, we've had ideas of tax cuts. Now, let's keep in mind, we're also, I mean, this is the largest tax cut in our state's history. We're still, we haven't even absorbed $240 million of the last largest tax cut in our state history. So for the next six years, not only are we eliminating the $525 million I just spoke about, but there's an additional $240 million of, of business franchise tax that we're uh, going to be absorbing. So it's a significant amount of money that we are, are foregoing, and we're still maintaining, paying our teachers, doing the things that we've talked about. So I, I think you have to take that in, into consideration that there's still another tax cut that we haven't even finished absorbing yet, and here we are doing another tax cut. So I think that shows you that we are uh, committed to to giving money back to taxpayers, but it needs to be in a measured approach. And that's that's the point we were trying to make is why are we going to lock ourselves into a 20-year program that we you know may or may not know how long it takes to do it let's take a bite of the apple this has no triggers this has no tax increases we're basically making sure that we're living within our means and we're giving relief where we where we want to give relief but i I would also submit to you lucian you look around the country what are other states doing every state in this country is flush with cash right now there's so many uh the federal transfers to states have just left the coffers flush with cash, and people, I think, have a kind of a misconception about that money and and the 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 recurrence of it. But you look at what other states are doing across the country. Arkansas has cut their rate from five four down to four uh, five nine down to four nine by 2025. Idaho's cut their top marginal rate from six point five to six, and another rate from three point one to three. Iowa will transition from eight point five down to a three point nine uh, in about four years. Uh, Missouri cuts their rate from 5.4 to 4.8. That's 60 basis points by 2028. You look at Montana cutting their rate by 1% uh, or a half a percent in three years. North Carolina is going from 4.9 to 3.9 over five years. Uh, same with Utah. Utah only cut theirs by 10 basis points. And Indiana, who people loud as a uh, loud as a conservative state, their income tax rate is 3.23. Over six years, they cut it to 2.9. So we're cutting ours a full point. We're eliminating a tax bracket, and we're giving Mississippians more of their money back, 
and it's a four-year plan. Oh, that's great. Well, look, we're coming up against a break. You got time to stick with us for one more second? Absolutely. Well, thanks, Josh. This is Lucian Smith in, in for Gerard here on Middays in the Element Wealth Studios here on Super Talk Mississippi. Mississippi, I, I, I will – let me respond to one of the good people on the text line here who says, uh, I'm a member of the swamp because I've called Madison Cawthorn uh, a liar. And I'll just tell you this. The only person I'm taking at their word on faith is Jesus Christ, and everybody else better bring receipts, and Madison Cawthorn doesn't seem to be willing to show them. And so I think he's a liar. And I tell you what, if he does come forward with some proof, I'll eat my shoe here in the studio, and I invite you to listen into it. Look, here with me now uh, is still the chairman of the Senate Finance Committee, uh, Josh Harkins. Josh, thanks for being with us. I, I want to come watch that if that happens. Oh, yeah. I don't think there's any risk of it. It'll no. be a little shoe, though. Yeah. Um, so we were talking before about the, the tax cut, and yeah. one thing you and I were talking about off the air is how, uh, the, how, how important fiscal conservatism is to you and I think is to a lot of our legislative yeah. leadership. Yeah, I think you know, one of the things that gets lost in all this is about what you know, the tax cuts and, and what we're uh, sending back to taxpayers, but also look at, at the fiscal conservatism on, the, on our spending side. One thing that we're doing this year is we're not bonding. We're not going to borrow three. We on average about every year about two hundred eighty-five to three hundred million dollars in bonds are issued every year for um, you know IHL uh, community colleges for buildings, Bureau of Buildings across our state. I mean the, the government owns hundreds of buildings that we have to maintain, keep uh, roof projects, air conditioning. All these things happen, and inflation doesn't only hit us individually; it hits the government too. But bonding is about you know around 285 300 million dollars a year and we are doing things like you know keeping up our buildings and providing for projects whether it's road projects in communities across our state but we're not doing a bond bill this year so that's 300 million dollars of debt that we're not adding on to our debt right now we're about four point uh i think 4.416 billion dollars in debt wow. we're going to pay off 294 million dollars this year this year we're making 436 million dollars of principal and interest payments on our debt we're going to lower that by about 294 million dollars this year if there's excess money which there looks like there's going to be based on the numbers that are coming this year we're going to have the ability not to have a bond bill next year that would be an additional 280 300 million dollars so you're looking at reducing your debt by about 600 million dollars additionally paying off 308 million dollars of principal next year so what does that do that frees up about 60 million dollars in debt service payments that you're not making on new debt to use for priorities that we need to uh to address so we're lowering our debt we're, we're saving on debt service, which we're able to apply to other issues. So it, it's, it's trying to create less of a um, kind of a need for recurring revenue where we can cut taxes. And so I think that's the part that it, people don't realize. And they say, well, there's still excess money that you're going to have a lot of money left over. We're going to use that money instead of going to the bank and borrowing it and paying interest on, on that principal with rates going up. Uh, we're going to you know basically pay cash for it. And so Hopefully, over time, not only are we reducing our debt, and I think our statutory debt limit is like thirteen or fourteen billion dollars. I think that's right. So, debt to you know what we were allowed to have and what we have is is very responsible. We're in a good position that in that regard, and I think you know look, we're we're going to save uh, you know close to sixty million dollars a year on debt service by not having a bond bill over this year and next year. So that's something that we'll look into uh, doing, and I think that's a good fiscal uh, conservative principle to adhere to. Well, there, there are a few people on the text line have asked about uh, Senate Bill 2844, which is the legislation having to do with the alcoholic beverage control warehouse. Yes. Where, where did the legislature end up there, or have you ended up somewhere? We, I, I believe we're filing a conference report uh, today that uh, Senator Chris Johnson has been working very hard. I think uh, Representative Yates uh, in the House and Representative Lamar have also been working on with him, and I think we're going to be taking that up Monday. Um, and so I... I I have met with him briefly on it. There's a few particulars they're working on to, to finalize, but they're going to be filing a, a report today on that and okay. getting ready to address that issue on Monday. And you've talked, we only have a couple minutes here, but I know you've talked a fair amount about uh, ARPA spending. Oh, uh, yeah. Where, where do you think we're going to end up in terms of how the ARPA money gets spent? Look, there, there are a lot of um, needs across our state for water, sewer, stormwater, uh, infrastructure work, and this is going to address – a lot of those. I think that there's about $750 million in play that we're going to allocate towards cities, counties, water associations across our state. Um, there's uh, money for uh, a whole host of issues. And uh, Senator Polk has done a great job in the Senate. I know he's worked with some House colleagues 
Uh, but Senator Polk has, has done an excellent job that I've, I've spoken with uh, really putting some plans in place to put that money to good use. And, and our counties and our cities across our state will have the option to, to put some of their ARPA funds that they got and show us, that, you know, look, this is a priority for us. This is where we're spending our money. Come alongside us and, and help us to uh, fix some of these issues that we're facing. So look and, and look, that helps makes our cities and, and counties better suited for development. Uh, you know, getting sewer out to places uh, for development is a good thing. And, and hope it's going to help uh, make the attractiveness of coming and locating here in Mississippi a, a, a better option. Well, Josh, thank you for uh, spending this time with us. And everybody listening, thank you for spending the last three hours here with us. This is Lucian Smith in for Gerard Gibbard in the Element Wealth Studios here on Middays on Super Talk Mississippi. Y'all have a good